Welcome to Game Night Live. WJBF Sports presents local high school football live in your living room each Friday night. Game Night Live is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And now, your hosts, John Hart and Ashley Brown. Well, welcome to Walton Way and ARC Stadium, Frank Enman Field, and the two oldest schools in Richmond County. But it's not about history, it's about tonight. And these two teams have a lot to play for, playing for the third and fourth spot in Region 4 AAA. Richmond Academy and Hepzibah on Game Night Live. John Hart joined, as always, by Ashley Brown and A.B. We are down to the nitty-gritty here. I mean, the, 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 it's win or, or don't. Well, and I talked to Coach Dorsey, you're right. There's a big difference between the third seed and the fourth seed. As he said, usually the second and third seed in most regions are pretty close. There's a big gap between number four and number one in most cases. So, yeah, you would definitely prefer to be that three seed, and that's exactly what's on the line tonight. The winner's the number three, the loser's the number four, and uh, both these teams headed to the playoffs on senior night here at uh, Richmond so again. It is a de facto playoff game here on Game Night Live. Let's get you to those Ford keys to the game. Yeah, I think uh, for Hepsiba we'll establish the run, uh, I think that's going to open up big plays through the air. They can do that because they've got a great quarterback receiver duo in Jalen Patrick and Eric Grant. I think for Richmond Academy, create turnovers and get pressure on Patrick. Uh, they were able to get a little pressure early in the Harlem game when we saw him earlier this year. Then after that, that really stalled. And our coaches matchup presented by Joe Hansen. Yeah, let's do that. Daniel Dorsey, I talked to him, like I said last night, a great young coach in his third season here at Hepsiba. He's actually an Augusta guy. He was a graduate of Westside. Before he came to Hepsiba, he was the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach at Toons County. And then for David Sammons at Richmond Academy in his first season, he's also a local guy. Went to Harlem, went to Augusta University. He's coached at the college level. He's been an OC at the high school level, and now he is the head man here for the Musketeers. And we'll get into that a little bit more as we go along. These are two guys who have local ties who really care about this area. Uh, but first, let's get you down to the field for the coin toss. Okay, we're expecting the home digging room again. Y'all got any questions? Who's going to call my coin? 13? This is a National Guard coin. The National Guard guy's ahead, and the flag's a tail. The flag's a tail, the National Guard guy's ahead. Okay, what do you want? Tails. You want the flag side. I'm going to let it hit the ground. Watch out, it might hit you. And it's ahead. You want to choose now and you want the ball? Okay. Which goal do y'all want? You, you want to defend this goal and kick it that way, right? Okay, turn your back to your goal. You guys are facing them. Whoa, don't go too far. All right, Richmond won the toss, and they'll get it to restart the game. Let's have a good night, okay? Here we go. So there you have it, the Richmond Academy Musketeers have won the toss and will receive the opening kickoff in this battle for playoff position. The Musketeers are ready, as are we. The Burke Health kickoff is next on Game Night Live. A.B., how about a 65-degree night in late October for what amounts to a playoff game between these two teams? Yeah, just a gorgeous night. I mean, this is we got a little football weather. We got two teams that, you know, on a given night can beat just about anybody. We've seen that. Uh, you know, Harlem is one of the best teams in the area, and Hepsiba gave them everything they could handle earlier this year. And uh, these two teams, I think, are it's a pretty good matchup as well. 29th meeting between these two teams. They first met in 1976. Richmond Academy had won 10 of the last 11 before Hapsiba put it on them 26 to 6 last year. And again, the two oldest schools in Richmond County. Hapsiba chartered in 1860. And of course, as you'll see on the center of the field, Richmond Academy very proud of its heritage all the way back to 1783. And off we go. And Richmond's going to get it first. Kel, uh, Kellen McDuffie on senior night as with a decent return up across the 40. And the Musketeers will have it at the 41-yard line. We mentioned senior night. They will 
They're led by a host of seniors on the off offensive side. The quarterback, Jack Murphy, a four-year starter at quarterback, number 11. There you see him. And the running back, number three, Malcolm Cochran, who's now going to split out to the near side, is also a senior. So an emotional night for these Musketeers. This is the final game, one way or the other, that they will play on this field. And Murphy's going to go for a bunch. And he's going to overthrow incomplete. And as you and I both know, our, our good friend Carter Murphy is, is, is one of our lead salesmen at uh, WJBF. And he told me this week when I talked to him about uh, senior night here and having to walk his son Jack out onto the field. Yeah. He said, going to have to wear sunglasses even though it's at night. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, they, they, they chop a lot of onions over there at the uh, – at the, <laughs> the concession stand, and it gets a little, uh, little misty out here. Well, we said it you know, earlier this year that you know you only get so few of these Friday nights, and it's, you know, in his case, he's had more than most as a four-year starter. But it's still that last one; it kind of sinks in. And they went for the big home run on the first play. Sadiq Pasha on the coverage as he overthrew McDuffie. But there you saw the arm that Murphy does uh, have; he can sling it. Also, an outstanding baseball player, two-time uh, All-Region pitcher. Two-time team MVP here at Richmond Academy. Was well, still one season to go, and there you see the offense. Cochran is the lead back, but they'll also uh, have McDuffie back there sometimes, and they'll also have TK Bell. Well, and we talked about you know from a dad's perspective, but from from, from a perspective of you and me doing yeah. the games up here in the booth as Murphy is uh, tracked down and dropped at the 35-yard line. And that was Terrence Heron, his ninth tackle for loss this year. Yeah, big play there by Heron. And you see the Brothersville on the back of all of the jerseys for Hepzibah. That was the original name of Hepzibah High School and the original name of Hepzibah the city as three brothers settled in an area there off of Brothersville Road where the school is connected. And now they still honor that heritage. Again, the two oldest schools here in Richmond County so much history between these two and Hepzibah. The defense winning on the first possession. Yeah, three and out and a nice punt, though, does take it all the way down to the 25. I love, though, these two teams doing this. Richmond Academy, of course, has always embraced their heritage, the 1783. Mm -hmm. But I love Daniel Dorsey, you know, coming in, bringing the Brothersville, so, you know, giving his team something to be proud of. And they've got a good football team, too. That young man is the leader. Tremendous, tremendous athlete. He can play anywhere on the field, but he happens to be their quarterback, and that's Jalen Patrick. Yeah, 1,100 yards passing, 300 yards rushing, nine total touchdowns, and on first down up to the 30. Well, the man that made the tackle, we're going to hear, even on a wide receiver screen, the nose tackle, number 62, Tyshawn Bell. Well, he'll line up at defensive end some as well. He is a monster. He was so good in the Harlem game. Unfortunately, they were a little bit outmatched in that game, but he played great. There you see him, number 62. Really talented defensive player. Again to the ground, and nothing there. Great stop made that's him again. by Tyshawn Bell, the aforementioned. Yeah, that's two in a row for him. They gave it to Telly Johnson. Telly Johnson's a kid that maybe wasn't as well-known coming into the season as Jalen Patrick and Eric Grant. They're two stars. But as the coach said, he was kind of waiting his turn. Well, he had back-to-back -back four touchdown games earlier this year. Uh, as their lead running back. Third and short. And they're going to give it to him again. He's going to have the first down. Good hard-nosed running back and good to see. You, you like seeing those seniors rewarded that have been in the program for three or four years and they finally get their shot and they, you know, seize it, they take advantage of it. And that's what he's done this year. Well, he's averaging eight yards per carry. So if you're going to give it to somebody, yeah. that's the one. But to go back to my point about seeing somebody, the Kellen McDuffie's and the Jack Murphy's here at yeah. Richmond Academy, I know it from a dad perspective, but you and I have seen these two from yeah. four years as well. It seems like it, it, it's, it's like yesterday. Speaking of, here's Telly Johnson. He's only a junior, but we seem like we've seen him on the game night live several mm -hmm. times as well in a huge game. Yeah, big pickup there, but you're right. And, and you know, you miss that those kids aren't going, you know, it dawns on you like, oh, man, I'm not going to see him play. Mm -hmm. some, of those, some of those guys you've seen for three and four years, you can sort of get attached to them. So it is tough. And, you know, some of them are going to go on and play college ball, some are not. Um, but uh, those Friday nights, there's just something special about it. 
Quick strike over the middle. It is complete. That is Deontay Singleton. Well, they are mixing the short passes and letting their receivers run along with the running of Telly Johnson and marching right down the field. This drive started way back at their 25. Very impressive what we've seen so far from this Hepsiba offense. Well, you mentioned Daniel Dorsey, 12 and 14 in his third season as head coach at Hepsiba. He was a defensive coordinator at Toombs County before he came here, but also the quarterback's coach. So he knows a little bit about offense, a west side grad. And now we have a pause. And a flag First down. on ARC. Yeah, hey. offsides on the defense there, encroachment. Um, he hasn't gone to him yet, but his favorite target to go to is Eric Grant, number 17, who is really immensely talented athlete. Started as a basketball player, but he's just so good as a big receiver. This is Jaden Law. And Eric Grant we'll get to in a moment, uh, has made a little national news on Game Night Live before. Yeah, matter of fact, but against we'll, Richmond. But we'll get to that. <laughs> Second and three for the Rebels. An impressive opening drive. Yeah, I just like how they've mixed it up. Oh, oh nice how lead. about that? Into the end zone. Telly yeah. Johnson for his 16th rushing touchdown of the year. When they year. dive at your feet, this is one way to handle it. Watch this. The safety comes in and jumps down and <laughs> just kind of hops over him. Well, you mentioned how balanced this Hepsiba offense was on the opening drive. They've been balanced all year. They 148 yards passing per game, 196 rushing per game, and Daniel Dorsey knows how to mix it up. And they marched right down the field, 75-yard drive, culminating with another TD for Telly Johnson. He also handles the kickoff and PAT duties. That ball was blocked. So Richmond Academy got a piece of that one and blocked it. Four carries, 42 yards, and a touchdown for Johnson on the opening drive. Hepsiba leads 6-0 with 8.03 left to play in the first quarter. As the great Ben Scully would say, pull up a chair. We're just getting started here from Frank Inman Field at ARC Stadium. Uh, the kickoff is bobbled and picked up, and a short gain by the aforementioned Kella McDuffie. Impressive opening drive by ARC, A.B. Well, I mean, they just mixed it up, uh, by the Rebels. Yeah, they yeah. just mix, mixed it up so well and literally went, I mean, streaking down the field. They had the one big run, but uh, other than that, it was just a nice mix of some short throws and letting the receivers run after the catch and then mixing in Telly Johnson on four big carries. And now let's see if Richmond can answer, but that was an impressive 75-yard drive to start. Again, Jack Murphy, the four-year starter quarterback for the Richmond Academy Musketeers. And on first down, oh, well read by Hapsaba. Yeah, T.K. Bell on the carry, but he ran into a wall at about the – Literally a yeah. wall. A yeah, wall of white jerseys. And that would be Marcus Kahn, I believe, a junior. And also Johnson is playing both ways. Yeah, Telly Johnson in there. And Alton Heron, who we mentioned earlier, also in the mix. Four-yard gain, though, for the Musketeers. And they'll stay on the ground. Oh, Goodness. That's John Telly Johnson, John yeah. <laughs> the early forerunner for both offensive and defensive player of the game. That was a big hit. It looked like, I mean, it was a decent pickup, but it looked like there could have been more room, and Telly Johnson came in there and just slammed the door. Well, be that as it may, it's going to be third and three. They'll call it third and two here in the stadium. What they decide to do. Cochran is in there. He's he's had some big individual games this year. Just hasn't had the consistency where you know to do it week in and week out like some other backs. But flag down before the play even begins. We'll and catch Telly, the call. Telly Johnson was in on that tackle again, and it's going to be a. Is that a first? Looks like a false it's start. Usually on the New legal formation on the offense. There's Murphy. Great look at the four-year starter. 
And again, you know, That's an known formation his dad. on the offense. We'll replay third down. Known his dad and his mom for a long time. Uh, his mom uh, mentioned his dad worked for us in sales at WJBF and. <laughs> His mom, uh, years and years ago, was a producer at WJBF, and I, I don't know if this is still factual, but for a long time, she couldn't watch the football games. She didn't like watching him get hit. She'll go to his baseball games. He's a very talented baseball player as well. And I talked to Carter, his dad, this week, and I said, you've you got to do the senior walk again yeah. in baseball season. <laughs> and speaking of, here is Carter Murphy, and he's going to be dragged out, and the ball comes out, and Hepsip has got it. Well, yeah, the ball came out. I believe the man who caused the fumble. It looks was like they're saying 50. the. Looks like they're saying he was down. Saying he was down. Yeah. Yeah. So Oops. it looks like Murphy was down. So it's not going to be a fumble recovery, but it will be fourth down. Solomon Mathis is the player who tackled Murphy that made the play. You can see him get him from behind there. And yeah, he's yeah, down. Yeah, he's down. But it's still a big play by this Heps of the defense. And the Rebels are going to have great field position once again. A nice high punt yeah, by good Barfield. Kick. Good coverage kick. And the Rebels will take over at the 34-yard line. You know, this was what happened in the Harlem game. You know, Richmond Academy had two first downs at halftime. They just could not move the football. And that's the way this one's starting. They certainly want to change that up. And now you give the ball back over to the very dangerous Jalen Patrick in this Rebels offense. First down. A different back this time. Rebels will go with, I believe that was. Marvin Preston. Marvin Preston, yeah, he's sophomore running back. So Daniel Dorsey mixing it up. Second and eight. They bring Grant over to the near side of the field. He's the 6'2 senior standout wide receiver. He is being covered by Bryce Ivey, number two for the Musketeers. Keep an eye on that matchup. Johnson again in the back. And as if on cue, there he goes. And nice play. Well read by Richmond Academy that time. And that was Will Dunnigan. Yeah, Grady Nogle got in there and hit him. And then you had a host of Musketeers come in and help out. You're right, number 25 uh, Dunnigan got there and also number 42 uh, helping out, that's Donovan Scott. So good team effort there by the Musketeers. And Grady Nogle, again, one of these Richmond Academy Musketeers that have been so instrumental in this turnaround of this program. Again, they won the, rich, the, the uh, region title in 2020 for the first time since 1976. And he was such a huge part of that. Yeah, nice play that time defensively by number 51, uh, uh, Tate Staley. He's a junior. Well, he made a great play. That was just, they set up the screen. They let Noble come on a blitz. They dumped it off uh, to Telly Johnson, but Staley was right there and had some help from Bell as well. So that's a good defensive stand by this yeah. Richmond Academy defense. They've got some playmakers. Tyshawn Bell is as good as any defensive lineman I've seen this year. I mean, they've got some playmakers on that defense. They just got to get something going offensively. And by the way, after this punt, depending on what happens here, and it goes McDuffie on the return. McDuffie with a big game, as usual, and dragged out of midfield. So, now, if uh, I could ask a favor of our guys in the truck to get an overhead shot of the field, because we were this was pointed out to us. There you go. See? Well, they first so, <laughs> should do a shot of just the R. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the, the paint job is great. Let's not get that wrong. But if you see... <laughs> Usually you'll see that the, 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 the main yeah. logo is at 50-yard line. We just want you to know that it's at the 45-yard line tonight. And then there's a 1783 I was going to say, it's not a mistake, though. They planned it. It's not. It. They there planned it. <laughs> it's just we don't want you, get, you guys to get uh, a little skewed a little bit. First and 10. Oh, nice cut by Cochran. Telly Johnson pulls him out of bounds. And... I said I mentioned Cochran earlier this year had some big games. He had a 159-yard game with three touchdowns earlier this season. 
He's capable of busting loose. Right now, my pick for offensive and defensive player of the game is Brothersville. <laughs> That's a good choice. Now Richmond got a nice defensive stop. Now they're starting to get some, you know, they had a nice return, then a nice run by Cochran. See if they can keep it going here. That's Cochran again. And he's one of the players on this Richmond Academy team that is getting some college interest. He's been offered by Erskine, one of three players on this Richmond Academy team to be offered by that school. He'll check out now they'll bring in TK Bell. Kind of a two-headed monster there at running back. So a first down, affordable auto insurance first down for the Musketeers at the 40-yard line. And another nice gain up the middle. And for the second straight play, Daniel Hargrove makes the tackle, but not before again. Like you said, Richmond has a decent run. That was T.K. Bell. Also, John, the last time we had Richmond, I noticed there were a couple of names that looked familiar running around for the Musketeers. Uh, junior number 12, Trav Wright, and then also Ben Wright, a freshman, and Travis Wright, the former great basketball player at Lakeside and Westside that went on to Georgia Southern. Uh, number 14 at wide out is his son, the freshman Ben Wright. And I mentioned, because I wasn't sure, Earl Wright for the longest time was the owner operator at Surrey Center Pharmacy, a staple in Augusta. And I, he came over and spoke to me before the game, Mr. Wright. So you know, it was real good getting to see him, longtime businessman in the community. And there's Bell again. He in a relation to uh, Van Earl Wright from. I uh, <laughs> don't think so. No, no the polar opposites. <laughs> Mr. Wright's kind of quiet behind the scenes. Real lover of sports, though, and a supporter. And his uh, son, you know, Travis who uh, played, like I said, at Lakeside, and then he transferred over to Westside. This was back in the uh, mid to late 90s when Westside you know, had some great teams, and like I said, he went on to Georgia Southern as a player as well. Big third down here for the Musketeers. You have to be over the age of 35 to understand the Van Earl Wright <laughs> reference. First down for the Musketeers and more. That's Grady Nogle. Yeah, Nogle on offense. How about that, the senior. I love it. I love he said, the play hey, coach, call. It's senior night. Give me a ball. I love the play call from David <laughs> Sammons. Creative and let them have some fun. Well, it worked. Richmond on the move here. Now, the defense with their stops giving the offense a little life. Kelly McDuffie had that great punt return. And another <laughs> run up the middle. <laughs> no, again for the 16 yard line. Let's get you down to Matt Lane for the, our first August auto, auto auction sideline report of the night. Yes, so for ARC down here on this side of the field, great field position, doing a great job of finding a play that will work for me. Run it actually right up the middle, right at Hepzibah. So we'll see if they're able to get in the end zone here before, uh, before the quarter's over. Well, Nogle is in the backfield again, and Nogle will get the call again inside the 15. You know, he's running like he's 6'1", 250 pounds, but he's not. <laughs> but it's working. I would love to know what practice was like this week at ARC. Yeah. What creative play calling and fun play calling from the Richmond Academy Musketeers. And we are through one quarter. They trail by six, but they're on the move. Second and five when we begin the second quarter on Game Night Live. It kind of felt like Hepsiba dominated that first quarter, but only 6 nothing as we begin the second quarter of play and Richmond Academy on the move. Yeah, and that block kick could come back to hurt Haunt him. Yeah. And the big play then again by number nine, Terrence Heron. He was at the, uh, you know, uh, the, the first guy to get to the running back and stop him. Big kid right there yeah, on the defensive line. Big play to start the uh, second quarter here and speaking of quarters that brings us to our qbs by the quarter brought to you by copa Brace hardware yeah let's do that uh jack murphy there you see him he only threw it once he threw the ball on that first down play where they threw it deep and it was incomplete so oh for one for him Jalen patrick on the other hand perhaps with two for two for 20 yards so not a lot of action for the quarterbacks in the first quarter uh, but that is your qbs by the quarter second and 12 for the musketeers they'll swing it out to tk bell Ooh. whoa Vicious, vicious tackle. And 
that is Ryan Allen, the leading tackler on this Hepsibah team. 63 tackles this year and an interception. It just looked so violent, but it was clean. He didn't get in and get it, you know, inside the shoulder pads. But watch this here. I mean, it takes some strength to stop somebody on the dead run and sling them back like that. That is legal. Yeah. And an early nominee for our hit of the game. Wow. Brought to you by East Georgia Health District. East Central District. We'll figure it out at the end of the game. <laughs> well, you know how some parts of you know game film you want to fast forward through. He's going to want to see that play about ten times. And again, Murphy under pressure, but he swings it out, and it's a touchdown into the arms of Malcolm Cochran. Now they stole kind of Hepsum's playbook on that first drive. Throw some short passes and let your guys work after the catch. And that's exactly what they did. Nice screen pass set up to Cochran, and it's a touchdown for the Musketeers. And a theme night for the T-Mobile student section here at Richmond Academy, obviously, as it has been. I was at the uh, Evans game last night. They were all dressed up for Halloween as well. Yeah, kind of weird, you know, with games being played on Wednesday and Thursday. And, I mean, heck, Monday night, Burke County's got a Halloween game Monday night. So, it's been a weird at year. At Wayne County, that's a big one. That'll yeah. decide number two in that region. Jefferson Murray with the point after. So, uh, Richmond Academy takes the lead 7-6 with 10-25 left to play. Now, you think these two teams don't care about this? Waiting for playoff position here. These two teams battling for third and fourth in Region 4 AAA. You see the kicker's pants there. That's for comfort. There's no pad. <laughs> he said the heck with the pads. And the shoes. <laughs> Look at the right shoe. Yeah. The two different colored shoes. But the kick goes out of bounds. And so that's going to be benefit the Rebels here. Well, while we have a moment, let's tell you about our friends from McDonald's. Right now you can mix and match two of your Go-to breakfast items like a sausage biscuit or a chicken McGriddle, sausage McMuffin, or hash browns, all for two nineteen. Top it off with a bold and delicious iced coffee for just $1.69. McDonald's, I'm loving it. John, you're getting of age where you'll start wearing two different colored shoes. Now, he's doing it on purpose. It's just going to be by accident. And not even <laughs> mention it or no, notice it. Actually, I heard another uh, fellow uh, member of the media tell a story on the air on radio this past week that he was out of town and walking around for half the day and realized he had two different shoes on. <laughs> oh, but this little <laughs> trick play from the Hepsiba Rebels didn't go for much, but it was fun to watch. That was Brandon Francis, a freshman. Yeah, he's a ninth grader that they're really high on. I tell you, we, we talk about the young kids. I saw a kid on tape. Harlem used to have a great pitcher named Bruce Lampkin. His son is an 11- or 12-year-old football player and a real good receiver. And they've got a quarterback on that team that's 11. John, he can sling it. I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to find out his name, and we're going to watch him because we'll be seeing him on uh, Friday nights pretty soon, I think. How about the pursuit by the Richmond Academy defense? Tyshawn Bell, the first one in. He had Dunnigan there helping him as well, number 25. This kid's throwing the ball. He's 11, John. He's throwing 25-yard darts downfield. I was like, who is this kid? <laughs> well, we will definitely enjoy him for the next yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Well, right now, you might as well. The number one quarterback in the state of Georgia right now, statistically, yardage, everything, is a freshman from Carrollton named Juju Lewis. He's thrown for about 2,700 yards already this year. At, and as of two weeks ago, he already had 30 touchdowns and only five picks. 30 TDs as a freshman through like eight games. As a matter of fact, I think it was through seven games. So they're just the young guys are ready to play these days. And Tack Staley with another big stick for the Musketeers. So another big stand for this yeah. Richmond Academy defense, which after kind of getting pushed around on that first drive. And I would say, okay, Hepsum came out a little flat. No, they looked great their first drive. <laughs> Richmond playing a little bit inspired ball tonight on senior night. They got the lead. They're about to get the ball back, likely. Oh, oh it's a goodness. High snap. Oh, boy. And the Musketeers are going to have the ball first and goal at the four yard line. Well, those are the kind of plays like you could come into the night saying Hepsa was probably the favorite. But when you make those kind of plays, the longer Richmond Academy at senior night, they're starting to feel it, they're making plays. 
And, and you can't have miscues like that. That's how you lose football games. They've already had an extra point blocked, and they've already had a snap over the punter's head, two special teams miscues already. But you mentioned this on your radio show last night, uh, the 13 at Huddle. Uh, <laughs> <Thanks for the question>. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned how – there aren't really favorites anymore. It, it has gotten to where on a given night anybody can beat anybody. And I, you, you throw – when you look at some of these scores and you see it and then the next week you see what teams do. It's, and you know it. When, when you first started and when I first started, you pretty much knew almost all the games who was going to win. And in most cases they were going to be blowouts, you know, probably half the games. And it's just not that way anymore. We're seeing more close games, more tight games, and more teams – you know, beating teams that traditionally they weren't supposed to beat. Second and goal from the five-yard line for the Musketeers. No goal again. Nope, it's going to be Murphy on the keeper. Did he get the pylon? He did. Touchdown, well, ARC. Good for him. I, you know, again, it's senior night. He's had kind of, He's been up and down in his career. He's had some great moments. He's had some down moments. Happy for that kid on senior night. He's got a touchdown pass and now a touchdown run. And I thought they bobbled the ball, but he just grabbed it one-handed, and then he reached for the pylon there at the end for the nice, uh, you know, to get in the end zone for the TD. A.B., I am to only understand that he has had great moments in his career. Never seen a bad moment. <laughs> Well, Richmond as a team. I work for his dad. <laughs> Richmond as a team. Richmond's been up and down <laughs> during his career. <laughs> what a drive! What a play on the on the punt for Richmond Academy. Great scramble by Jack Murphy, and what a game we have brewing here on Walton Way. We'll take a time out, and we'll be right back on Game Night Live. The T-Mobile student section. Just game. another normal night at Richmond Academy. They don't even know it's Halloween. I was going to say, they're not. Just in. <laughs> <laughs> and off to the races go the Rebels. They'll have great field position to start this drive with 7.43 left in the second quarter. And the, if they did get a little flat and lax of days after that quick drive, they better get it in gear right now because the Musketeers have come to play tonight. They benefited from the miscue on the punt. They punch it in. They've got the lead. And now let's see if that defense can get another stop. They've gotten back-to-back -back stops against this very talented Hepps offense. Well, I know you and I are big fans of both of these coaches and the yes. cultures they're trying to build with both of these programs. And ARC, actually both coaches are kind of trying to continue as huge, another huge game. <laughs> Uh, perhaps a, uh, by Telly Johnson, who is uh, like the t a tank, basically, running yeah. through the uh, defense. But you and I have talked about how these coaches don't have to rebuild these programs. They're trying to continue the success of their predecessors. William Harrell was before uh, Daniel Dorsey. Lyle Burns here before uh, uh, David Sammons. And a oh, big a pass and catch, Sadiq Pasha. Well, and he scores his third touchdown reception of the year. Just a miscue in the secondary. That was too easy. He was wide open. And Patrick hit him on the run. Perfect throw. But, yeah, wow. there was a miscue. You had the, uh, the safety on that side of the field and the, defense, and the corner were both on one receiver. And Pasha cuts it across the middle and is wide open. So Pasha's. 35-yard touchdown catch gives the Rebels the lead again. And the Rebels said, flat? We're not flat. Let me show you. Well, we might be in for a shootout, these two yeah. teams. Hepsibah averaging 26 points a game. Richmond Academy averaging 27 points a game. Despite the miscue, they're not worried about it. They're going to kick the extra point. And Jalen Patrick now 5 for 5 for 62 yards on the game. Well, both quarterbacks, look at what they're doing. Patrick now 5 for 5 with 60-some yards and a touchdown. And Jack Murphy's got a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. So both quarterbacks starting to put their stamp on this game for sure. A lot of history on this football field, John. Well, and we'll, we'll get to some of that. Yeah. This, they've been playing football on this spot for about 100 years now. You know, and as a kid, I've said this before during some of our broadcasts here, you know, right behind where we're sitting is the old field and the practice field, and there's mm -hmm. a track. And, you know, that is where, as a kid, you know, if, if I came down to stay with my grandmother, she would walk that track, and I would go out there and act like I played, was playing on the high school team, you know, out there running around catching the ball. And they did fake it and go for two. 
Yeah, they're going to say it's no good. And they went for Grant. I said they were going to kick it, and they lined up like they were, but then they decided to go for two. They were going for the tie yeah. game. Yeah. Here's the Busby's instant replay. Well, heck, speaking of that uh, – History here on that field, A.B., let's talk about the UGA game back in 1944. Yeah. That game. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. You can see This is it the all. exact same spot. doesn't look that much different, does it? No, that is so awesome. This is when the Daniel Field Flyers, which was made up of, a, of, of basically uh, college players who were serving in the military stationed at Daniel Field, played the University of Georgia and beat them on this field in 1944. Very cool history. That is such a cool picture. You know, and if you look back a little ways, there was, you know, Duke's Restaurant and some of the places mm -hmm. used to be here when I, you know, even when I was a kid. So really, really cool look, to look back at stuff like that. And before the kickoff, we have a timeout by the Musketeers. Interesting. And David Salmon's not no. See, look at look look at the 1951 state champion yeah. on the left. They have all the state champion banners behind uh, here, and just the you feel the history when oh, you're here and, at ARC. And some great names and players. Pat and Nat Dye were two great ones here, and I mean you can go up and down the list of those. Really, in the 50s and 60s, you had Valdosta. Great that, shot by our guys in the, the truck. 20s. Good job, Kyle. But you know, you look at these teams. There's 25. It's amazing. 28. And then, okay, these teams here in the 50s, back then it was really Richmond Academy, Valdosta, and there was a couple of teams in Atlanta, like Lanier Let's don't forget and a the few soccer others. state champions there at the end. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, I mean, you really, you know, those were the big teams in mm -hmm. the whole state of Georgia. And, you know, you had players that played here that came from all over the CSRA and played at Richmond. This was the high school. Yeah, they've been on this spot. This is the sixth oldest high school in the United States of America, which is kind of hard to wrap your brain around. Yeah. Uh, but they've been on this spot since 1926. Yeah, beautiful historic building. And, you know, this whole area for a long time was – Oh, and they – Oh, goodness. And as if Telly Johnson doesn't do enough, he – kicks off for Hepsiba as well, but Musketeers will have the football well, at the 43. He kicked off, and he almost got the onside kick. <laughs> you know, they they did a little punch kick, kind of almost like an onside, and Telly Johnson was the first man to get there for Hepsiba. Richmond Academy does recover, though. So ARC with a two-point lead, and the ball at the – they're going to put it down at the 39 – right at the 40-yard line. And a red-hot Jack Murphy who already has – the touchdown run, the touchdown throw to Malcolm Cochran. He's got his team playing some good football right now. These last couple of drives, they look good. One of them, obviously, a short drive as T.K. Bell takes it. And Bell with a five-yard gain. You saw Murphy's arm, too, on that first throw of the game. He can sling it. And, you know, he's had, you know, the, you know, Kelly, Kelly, uh, Kelly McDuffie and him have been a great, you know, combination over the years. And he's had some other guys, Maurice Freeman and, some other guys that were here with him and able to, you know, take advantage of that arm sometimes. But they haven't really, other than that one deep pass to start the game, they've been mostly throwing short. They're going to call it a three-yard gain. And this time, Murphy will keep, and he'll get dragged back if there's a flag down. Yeah, Telly Johnson again. And Murphy tried to fake him out, but Johnson got that big right arm. I say Telly Johnson. That might have been 15 instead of 45. 15 Carnair Floyd. 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 And he leads the Rebels in tackles for loss, but this is going to go against the offense. I told him on the offense, we'll replay second down. So instead of second and seven, it'll be second and 17. Also heard that, talk about well-rounded, before the game they were going over what the seniors plan to do, and Jack Murphy plans to go to law school. Right now, he's got his Musketeers on top, but second and long after the penalty. Well, you know, they're motivated on the senior night. 
to win on this turf for the last time. And how about that? Nice big gain gets all of the penalty back. Yeah, got TK Bell. Got all the penalty back plus a couple, so. And a 12. So second and eight. TK Bell now seven carries for 30 yards, whereas we were told by Chris Cassidy, who is filling in for the legend Nathan Edwards tonight. And Cochran's back in for Bell. They're going to throw it. Yeah, Murphy over the middle. Had him, but broken up. And again, who's on the breakup? Telly Johnson is everywhere. Yeah, that pass looked like it was on the money. So bring up fourth down in a punting situation for the Musketeers. That'll bring on Reed Barfield, who is the punter for the Musketeers. A good field position for Hapsaba. Barfield, another one of these guys. Oh, oh my goodness, it is blocked. And it is Hepzibah Ball at the 33-yard line. We'll have to look at who got it and who got on it, but a great play for this Hepzibah special team. Yeah, unit. either 10 or 26 recovered. It would have been their ball either way, but the key was who blocked it, and I think it was Grant. 17 it was, Eric Grant. So Grant blocks it, and then 26 ends up recovering it. That's the, run, the, front, that's the backup running back. Uh, Preston, so Marvin Pre Preston recovers it. You know, Richmond's blocked a, an extra point, and they've had the snap, you know, benefit of the snap going over Hepsiba's head, and Hepsiba returns the paper with a blocked punt. And wasting no time are the Rebels into the arms of Antonio Heath. And a big gain and another first down. Another good-looking athlete they throw the ball to there as he's mixed it around between Pasha and Heath and – we, uh, and he hasn't connected with Grant yet. That's his number one target, but he's been okay. He's connected with three or four other guys. And there's Jalen Patrick, who's off to a really good start. Throwing again, completing again. And that was Singleton, who is finally brought down. Singleton with a couple of catches now. And he's got a touchdown reception to his credit already this year, hoping for another. Well, it says something, though, when you got your quarterback is seven for seven, and he's thrown to four different receivers, and he's yet to throw to his top target. And this time he'll keep. What a fake. Patrick oh, my to the goodness. corner. What? Easy touchdown for the Rebels. What a fake by Jalen Patrick. It looked like he didn't have any running room, but watch the fake he makes at the beginning of this play, John. Watch this right there. He made two people miss, and he gets to the corner for the touchdown. Well, he said, okay, Jack Murphy, you can have a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown. I will, too. His third rushing touchdown of the year, his 10th touchdown overall, 11th touchdown overall. Well, he's and somebody Patrick that now the – 7 of 7 for 85 yards and two rushing rushes for 22 yards and a touchdown. Now we winding down towards the end of the regular season here, and, of course – He's a senior. We'll have to start thinking about him for a possible border bowl spot <laughs> as those teams start to, uh, you know, get put together. And Rebels go for two as well, and Grant is stopped short of the goal. And speaking of Eric Grant, can we go back to last year? Let's do it. This was This game something. made national news last year as Eric Grant made the You Got Mossed segment on ESPN NFL Countdown for that catch. Look at that. Going up with one hand, bringing it down. You got mossed. And I talked to Coach Dorsey, and he said he was watching game film, and his phone kept going off, and he was ignoring it because he's like, I'm in the middle of doing my stuff. And <laughs> he said it just kept going off, so he looked, and it was everybody sending the highlight over and over again. And, you know, big, big moment for that kid and for this program. Yeah, 26-6, to six, a Hepzibah win last year, and that was – one of the biggest plays in that game here on Game Night Live. And right now, Hepzibah with the lead once again. 
18-14 and kicking off. And McDuffie is dragged down at the 28-yard line. He kind of stopped and said, let me go this way, and that's what brings him down. Let's head down to uh, Matt Lane for an Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Matt. On the last drive, you saw ARC right there really trying to plan out a, a good drive to try to get in the red zone against Hepzibut, unable to do so, and then having that uh, snafu with the punt and the impending score for Hepzibut. But for ARC here, really need to try to get a drive together to not turn the ball over to Hepzibut with a, a, enough time left to maybe score before half to really try to stick in this one. Matt, thanks. That is an Augusta Auto, Auto Auction sideline report. Rebels, or uh, the Musketeers, I should say, start from their own 30-yard line and nothing on first down. Well, we have, I, I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised that the back and forth off uh, offense we're seeing on both sides, I mean, already had five touchdowns already in the first half produced. Well, Hapsaba allows 21 points a game. Richmond Academy allows 16 points a game on defense. Might see both of those eclipsed here in the first half. One already has been. I'm okay with the shootout. I don't mind it either. And that's what we've got. Both teams showing that they can move the football and they can make big plays and score. As Cochran takes it up to the 35. So that's going to bring up third down for the Musketeers. Third and we'll call it five. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the Eichel's Law Firm Halftime Show with Matt Lane. We've got some special guests for you. We'll take a look at our host school, Richmond Academy. Have a listen in to the Richmond Academy Marching Band. All coming up on the Eichel's Law Firm Halftime Show. But first, a swing out here on the near side. That is Josh Coors. I like that play. We have not called his name tonight, and a first down for the Musketeers. Yeah, Murphy kind of pretended he was going to do the read option and just stopped and threw the ball. I like that play. And by the way, also at halftime, we will get you caught up on scores from around the area with the Waynesboro Dodge Chrysler Jeep uh, Ram. And we've had plenty of games already played this week. We, we have a Wednesday night game from Burke County, Thursday night, a couple of games last night. Right now, big rivalry game over in Aiken, South Aiken taking on the Aiken Hornets. South Aiken with 35 on the board at halftime, 35-17 they lead. Yeah, that uh, Aiken and South Aiken has been a rivalry for many, many years, but right now South Aiken trending upward. Yeah, and they've got that dynamic duo, Terrence Smith and mm -hmm. their running back, Javon Edwards. Tough spot for the Hornets. Tonight. Although congratulations, though, to uh, Bryson Staley uh, over at Aiken. He got offered this week by Boston College. A big offer for him, his first division, you know, major, you know, power five offer. We talk about uh, programs with familiar names. There's always a Staley at Aiken. <laughs> there is. Uh, Brian, and I, uh, Bryson's dad, was an incredible player back in the day. Clemson uh, recruit. And Cochran up the middle for another big Musketeer first down across midfield into Hepzibah territory at the 46-yard line. Yeah, Aiken's once proud program. I, I would like to see them come back because, you know, when I first started covering games in the 90s, Aiken was, I mean, they were good every year. You think about some of the players that they've had, first round NBA NFL draft picks. Um, just They've had some great, great players over the years, but they've been down for a number of number of years now. Well, and as, as, as Hepzibah calls a timeout here to talk about it, that, that's a good time for us to mention, you know, we we have so many good young coaches in our area, and Elijah Juan Page is one of those at Aiken, who played there, has that lineage, yep. wants to rebuild that program. You talk about D'Angelo Bryant at Silver Bluff. There, there's so many guys that you and I covered. Martin Borders in Harlem. Martin Martin Boyder in Harlem, yeah. yeah, absolutely, who are rebuilding those program. It's taking a little bit longer at Aiken, but I do feel like Elijah one page has the right idea there and, and will eventually get that. They, it's hard to follow in the footsteps of a Kerry Johnson and, and the lineage that yeah, we had there, yeah. but uh, they'll, they'll get back on their feet. And there's too much talent in Aiken for them not to, not to be good for too long. Well, you're right about the coaches too, not just the, but we got a lot of good young coaches and you know, it, it's, a, it's a case well, now. Salmon's is 30. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And, and it's the case now in Richmond County and Columbia County 
are we going to be able to keep them here? Right. You know, is the pay going to be right? It's a great you know, are, point. Are we going to are, are you know in other areas the booster clubs are allowed to you know give them you know cars and vehicles. Are we going to be able to keep them? That's the question. I hope we can. Fantastic point is Murphy on the keeper. Scampers up to the 40, we'll call it the 42 yard line. I think sometimes, and I, you know, I'm a sports guy, so obviously I'm going to favor the sports, but, and, and I get it. School is academics first. I understand that. But it's so much more than that. It's the social socialization, and, and there's something about successful sports programs, especially football in high school that do so much for your school for the for the pride uh, you know attendance is always better at those kind of programs i mean studies have shown that and i just think that sometimes we're so focused on the other side that we forget sometimes the extracurricular stuff can be just as important um you know again i'm not saying that it should be the end-all be-all and I, I get where I, you know it has its place but i think sometimes we overlook it and just focus academics and not how much the social side of things is important for these kids too. Well, and not to get on our soapbox too much is the Musketeers would like us to talk about this drive that's going on right now. <laughs> a fantastic run by Cochran there after a great scramble by Murphy. But you're right. Some of my best friends that I still have, uh, well, Facebook mostly, but because I don't get back home as much as I used to, but we made friends in high school going to sporting events. Yeah, yeah. And you're talking about the socialization. So it is very, very important. So is having second and 10 here, or second and five, I should say, from the 35 for Richmond Academy. Well, there are some good battles Fly going on up front. End. Yeah. Well, we got some pushing and shoving there at the end of the play. A couple of helmets came off during the play. We got, there's some battles going on up front on both sides too. Some really good fights. And I don't mean fights, fights. I mean like battling, you know, battling each other. Battling each yeah, other yeah, and absolutely. blocking. 54 right there on the right side of your screen. Alonzo Jones for Richmond. Blocked two different guys on that play. After the play, a personal foul on the offense. After the play, a personal foul on the defense. Those penalties are not enforced. It's going to be third down. So sound and fury signifying nothing. Yeah, that's always the thing. Those offsetting ones, you don't really get punished for doing anything. <laughs> you know, obviously when it's just you, it stands <laughs> out. But when it's offsetting, it's like, all right, it didn't. I got away with one. Uh, closing in on the end of the half here. And second and four here from the 32-yard line. And nothing there. Yeah, good job by uh, number three, Ryan Allen, Ryan, Allen. Or Ryan Allen, excuse me, for he you know, did his job. He, not only did he turn it in, he was able to make the tackle, but he stayed home and made a nice play there. Well, again, he is their leading tackler. As we get inside the final minute here of the first half. And, and Nogle is Musketeers. in the backfield. Yeah, with Nogle back in the backfield again, trying to go hurry up 44 seconds. It is Nogle, and oh my goodness, who else would it be <laughs> but Telly Johnson? Yeah, he is. You know, we've seen each yeah, week impressive guys that kind of jumped off. You know, Clark Jackson and some of these players we've seen this year. I, we, I, Telly Johnson's right up there. He's been impressive tonight. Fight, fought off the block and came in. He was literally about 18 inches off the ground and made that play. I don't know that we've called anyone's. One, anyone else's name in a half more, more than often, called yeah. Telly Johnson tonight. Good point. So we'll see what the uh, Rebels try to Ooh, risky pass. Uh, it's nice going to be catch. a big game, absolutely. Oh, look at this speed. Antonio Heath across <laughs> midfield to the 42-yard line. And now, <laughs> I, heck, I thought the Rebels were just going to take it to the locker room with the lead. But, well, hang on. They're backing up. Is there a flag down that we didn't see? What a catch, though, by Heath. It might not count. Let's see. But I, I was about to say the first incompletion for Jalen Patrick, and it's, well, except for the two-point conversion. But instead, Heath made a great bobbling catch, but it's going to come back. Yeah, and now I think you might see the Rebels just uh, take it to the locker room. In motion, on the offense, will replay first down. Good. 
I was at the Evans uh, Brunswick game last night. Yeah. I've never seen more motion penalties in my life. Evans hung in there with him for a while. On both sides. It wasn't just, it yeah. was just a lot of penalties yeah. on the offense on both sides. So safe play for the Rebels, and we'll see if they just let the clock tick down here. You're right, Evans. Uh, it was 7 nothing at the half, which I think raised some eyebrows around the state with Brunswick being undefeated and ranked number nine. Evans had a lot of opportunities, just could not capitalize in the red zone. So perhaps they're not just taking it to the locker room. No. They're going to try to throw one deep. Patrick, who has the arm. He's he can got sling a man. the bean as they say, and he's got a man. Unfortunately, the clock is going to run out if you're a Hepsiba fan. Deontay Singleton on the receiving end. Huge play for the Rebels, but time runs out. He had to roll out for a moment. If he had been able to throw that pass just a hair earlier, that's a touchdown. He got and a little too much air under it. And if you're a Musketeers fan, whew, yeah. breathe a sigh of relief because the Rebels would have been in the red zone. But instead, it is halftime here at Frank Inman Field at ARC Stadium with Hepzibah leading by a score of 18 to 14. The Eichels halftime show is coming up next with Matt Lane, next here on Game Night Live. What we're gonna do really quick is check in with ARC's band as they're performing on the field. Let's take a look. So we're all set to go for the Burke Health kickoff here in this second half. 24 minutes to decide the third and fourth position in Region 4 AAA. Now, Richmond Academy still has to travel to Salem next week, which is also True. one and two in this region. 
Salem, Salem will have their hands full this week or tonight, actually, with Harlem. So you would assume you would assume they would lose another game, but but as we all we all know what you do when you assume. That's right. I yeah, can't Salem, say that on a fam family broadcast. Yeah, Salem one in seven on the season. But you're right. That that's true. They could technically beat Richmond Academy. Coach Dorsey last night was saying, you know, both these teams should be in the playoffs. But you're right. Now anything can happen. We've so Hapsa will start from the 23 yard line, 22 yard line. Well, they started their first drive of this game after a three and out from their defense. They went 75 yards with a hefty mix of Telly Johnson runs and Jalen Patrick passes to get the early lead. Telly Johnson with 52 yards rushing in the first half. He's in the backfield for the, to start the second half. And how about that stop on first down by Tyshawn Bell? That is a matchup of two absolute beasts. Telly Johnson <laughs> running it. I felt it. the ground and shake. I, and I told you before the game how much I liked Tyshawn, Tyshawn Bell last game against Harlem. Uh, man, he was just all over the place. And you see there, very athletic play from the defensive end. No gain on first down for the Rebels. One thing about Jalen Patrick, you know, he's just, it, I mean, it doesn't seem like anything's phasing him. You don't know whether he's up 100 to nothing or getting beat 100 to nothing. Just seems real calm and just secure in what he's doing out there. And Pick up of three on second down. Coach Dorsey was saying they had a lot of good young players in the pipeline, but I don't care how, how good they are. It's going to be tough to replace that young man next year. Give him four, third and six. And the receiver drops that one, trying to run before he heard footsteps from yeah. Will Perry. That was Brandon Francis. You know, even that situation there, he's right, trying to call the play. He's spinning his fingers trying to say, hey, I, I need it to call it again. They're not paying attention. You know, they don't see him. He's getting their attention, but never got rattled. You know, took his time, got the play. I, I really like what I'm seeing from him. Do you think they call Will Perry the refrigerator? <laughs> If not, they should. The bad thing is, probably not a player on the field would even know what we're nope, talking about. Absolutely not. <laughs> Good defensive stand for our Richmond Academy here on the opening possession of the second half. Yeah, they should get great field position. Here goes McDuffie. Yeah, McDuffie across midfield. And Richmond Academy, as mentioned, will have great field position out of bounds at the 40-yard line of Hapsibah. You know, he wasn't much of a factor in the Harlem game, and we knew going in he could be. Uh, McDuffie, and, and th he's put his stamp on this game with two really nice returns to set up Richmond Academy with great field position. So the Musketeers trying to take the lead here early in the second half. And the seniors there, Jack Murphy, Malcolm Cochran. And Cochran gets the call on first down and picks up six. Yeah, nice nice gain right up the middle. Like I said, if you look at the stats, Hepsville looks like they've had the better of it. But Richmond Academy is one big play away from having the lead in this football game. They're on their home turf at senior night. And you just... You, Got to put teams away when you when you can, and Hepsville hasn't been able to do that. Seven for Cochran, second and three. Yeah, you love these second and short situations because you can do so many different things. If you want to take a shot, you could. I would, go, I would go deep here. Yeah, especially from this part of the field. They do not. It's T.K. Bell. Well, he's going to make a man miss and get the first down, though. That's why I'm up here, and David yeah, Sammons yeah, is yeah, down yeah. there. We always want to take a shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> and an affordable auto insurance first down for the Musketeers. Another six yard game, uh, gain first down from the 26 yard line. Yeah, this drive started with a nice defensive stand and then a great punt return by McDuffie. And the Musketeers on the move. Another and good another run. big game. 
Now the offensive line starting to, early on, Hepsiville's doing a great job up front. Now the offensive line starting to exert itself a little bit. Well, we maybe can get, a, you know, plaques for the entire offensive line for the <laughs> offense, McDonald's <laughs> offensive players think, of the game. I'm I sure think our, our red cap just fell our down. Friend, <laughs> our friend Scott Scadden wearing the red cap tonight. I'd be just uh, fine with that. So second and five after the five-yard gain on first down. Yeah, sales folks and production people love when you change the rules in the middle on the air. They love when you do that. <laughs> it's Cochran. <laughs> and he had a, a window there, but it was shut quickly by Canary Floyd. Yeah, Floyd, like you said, leads the team in tackles for loss. Good look at them there. They got some playmakers on this defense. This is, you know, again, these are two football teams that on a given night can give anybody all they can handle. We just got the go ahead from downstairs. <laughs> I, what I can't believe you just said it earlier. Next week's the last one of the. Uh, this uh, season has flown unreal. by. It is unbelievable. And we don't know where we're going to be next week. We by don't. The way. Uh, it depends on the outcome of tonight's games. Again, we have uh, for the last couple of years, as Murphy has just swallowed up. And that is Ryan Allen, again, the leading tackler on this Hepsiba team. I mean, he was shot out of a cannon coming in there. I mean, Mur there was nothing Murphy could do on that play. But, yeah, we, we so depending on what happens tonight, we could be anywhere next yeah. week. Uh, we've, the last couple of years we've had flex games uh, where we try to pick the best matchup on the last couple, three weeks of the year. And uh, so we'll, we'll let you know when we make a decision. And now it looks like we're going to have a timeout at Richmond Academy. And we'll take timeout with them with 7.25 left play in quarter number three with Hepsiba nursing an 18-14 lead. Uh, no, the answer is no. 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 I saw a friend of mine, she went skydiving, and she posted the stuff on Facebook. The answer to that is no And as I well. said, I said, oh, man, I would do that too. And I said, if the plane was burning, <laughs> I was on a 12 by 12 piece of fuselage, and it was burning too, <laughs> yeah. and then somebody pushed me. <laughs> That's the only way. Yeah, it's like, would you jump off a ship into the water? Yeah, if it's the Titanic, and it's about to. Yeah. Dude, dude, did y'all see? Y'all know the guys that wear the wingsuits? Uh, they yeah, 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 right yeah, near yeah, the cliff. Yeah, yeah. This guy died, he dove right near the cliff. He got stuck on a branch, a tree going down. He stuck up there and said he needed a helicopter to come get him. Nope. No thanks. The T-Mobile student section, uh, many of whom stole AB's. Costume ideas for Monday night. No, that's John Hart. That's me. The sunglasses guy in the sunglasses and Braves, and Braves is absolutely me. Uh, no doubt. We had a homage to. I am told. Uh, Clark Kent. There's Clark Kent. I'm we told got to ask you characters? what you dress up as when you dress up, AB. Well, I'm also told to tell you not to lie. Today I dressed up as a middle of the pack chili cook off person. Because I did not do well, thanks to Matt, one of the judges, Matt Lane. A little inside baseball well, for everybody. Yeah. We had a chili cookoff at work. <laughs> Third and 11. I was not pleased with my finish. Uh, so I took my chili and I went home. Going to go with Cochran. <laughs> yeah, Richmond so. Academy's look good. This is, a, this is one of those drives coaches love. You're eating up clock. You're eating up clock. You're not going for big plays. You're just There's methodically moving down the field. But yeah, you're right. This is it, it, David Sammons has to be happy with this drive so far. Until, we'll until now. Yes. Yeah. Illegal formation against the Musketeers. So. 
third and we'll call it third and 18. Well, this drive was looking so good. Now all of a sudden, third and really long here, third and 18. But in field goal range. Yeah, in this game, those points could certainly matter. It's tight. Murphy with the pump fake. Oh, wanted Cochran. Yeah, Couldn't make the connection, and now. Not, not sure if he'd have gotten the first down anyway, but now we'll see the kicking unit. This will be about a 39-yarder. And Jefferson Murray doing the honors, number 60. He's a junior. Richmond has had a pretty good tradition of kickers over the years with their great soccer program. And Indeed. He's got the distance. Uh, that would have been good for yeah. 42 yards. He nailed that one. So Richmond Academy pulls within a point, 18-17 with 5.59 left to play. So Jefferson Murray gives his team a little shot in the arm with a big kick there. Well, we were very sad today to hear of the news of the passing of University of Georgia legendary coach Vince Dooley. This uh, news came right before we hit the air. 90 years old, if you're a Georgia, yeah, if you're a fan of anything really, you, you know uh, the name Vince Dooley and you know what he has meant to, to not only the sport of college football, but the, the state of Georgia and, and sports in general. And there you see him being carried off the field after the 1980 national championship which was the last national championship for the bulldogs before uh obviously this past january uh ben Stooley dead at the age of 90 years old one of those people ab that you you just felt like was always going to be with us as the well, ball pops oh, loose there at the job. end well also one of those people john i'll, I'll say this that I, I don't know that you can find anybody say anything bad about him. no whether you were a Georgia fan or not, whether you agreed, you know, with his stances as, you know, on which teams he talked about after that, what, you know, no matter what. I don't know anybody that I've ever heard say anything derogatory about. The one complaint I would say, and it, and it wasn't really a complaint, but, man, he could find a way to make every opponent seem like they were the <laughs> greatest team Georgia had ever played. Hey, Vic, whole... He was, the, I think, one of the first coaches I heard do that all the time. The whole during return. On the, kick, on the receiving so the team, first matter. down. Uh, you're right. If you have a chance to, I think there a lot of them are on YouTube. Go yeah. back and look at some of those Vince Dooley shows from the <laughs> early 80s, and they would be playing, uh, you know, middle western tech somewhere. Yeah. Like, and he would, we got no shot. And that's where Larry Munson got it, yeah. too. They were a great pair. As Patrick keeps it. Oh, and he spun out of the tackle. So didn't get a lot of yards, but he gave forth a great effort there. Reminds me of a run by D.J. Walton, the Evans quarterback last night, who ran for about 60 yards to gain 20 on a first down. Does it look like they had him right here? And he kind of spun around and went the other way. Then they had him, and then uh, he broke loose. And then, boy, at the end of that play, Bell came over and tried to truly finish him off. Always loved Larry, listening to Larry Munson. Yeah. One of my favorite moments of him was, and I don't remember who Georgia was playing, as Patrick will hand it off here. And of course, it's Johnson once again for a first down. I don't remember who Georgia was playing. This would have been in the late 80s, early 90s. But he was griping about how there's, we're behind, and there's just no time left. There's no time left. And then Georgia scores, and immediately he says, there's just too much time left. <laughs> yeah, that's the epitome of it there. Uh, so funny. Well, like I said, Vince Dooley was, you know, cherished by everybody. Great gardener late in his life. He was. I, you know, he. I, I mentioned that to you before. We were talking about that a little bit. Yeah, he was very big into horticulture. Actually wrote a book mm -hmm. about flowers and was really into that. Uh, the extension agent here, you know, the extension agent, former Clyde Lesher, the former extension agent, and Sid Mullis, the former both at Richmond County, they, you know, talked a lot about Vince Dooley over the years on the lawn and garden program on the radio side. Vince Dooley will be missed, dead at the age of 90. And here, Richmond Academy 
or I should say Hepsibit with a one point lead and on the move with 415 left here in the third quarter. And Johnson. No, that's not Johnson. Back, yeah. That was a different back. That was uh, Jaden Law, who we mentioned earlier on defense, but now getting the play on offense. Richmond Academy thought they came up with the football, but it's going to be Hapsica Ball. Yeah, that was Malik Bell. They've got three bells. TK is the running back. Tyshawn's the defensive end, and Malik is another uh, outstanding defensive end. Which is appropriate because they have a bell they ring at the far end of the field when they win football games. And they're hoping they can ring it tonight. They're only down one. Jalen Patrick has other ideas. He's just an impressive looking athlete if you look at him. But like I said, he doesn't seem phased. Oh, oh speaking of impressive, here. Will Dunnigan, a sophomore linebacker. And Dunnigan's trying to get up. Dunnigan says he's got the football. Any officials are talking about it. Let's see this play. I didn't notice he came away with the ball. Just a blindside hit. Well, oh, that one's going to be tough because as they went down, it still looked like. Uh, it looks like they're going to say they're going to the ball. And that, and either way, they're going to have to right punt call. the football. Probably the right call, but, man, what a play by Dunnigan. And Hepsiba just didn't catch him. He was blitzing off the end. Nobody there, and Patrick was in no man's land. McDuffie, the Erskine recruit, stands at his own 40-yard line for Richmond Academy. And he's just going to – well, I said he's going to watch it go by, but it was took a great heps of a bounce, and he'll pick it up and run it back to the 40. And that's where the Musketeers will start with 2.29 left in quarter number three, 18-17, heps of a. Richmond Academy down one, but with the football at its own 40-yard line. The sixth oldest high school in the United States of America, but gosh, both of these teams go back so far. The two oldest teams in Richmond, two oldest schools in Richmond Academy, and the Handoff on first down is to Bell. He's going to pick up about five. About five yeah. yeah, great job following his blockers there and kind of taking his time, not rushing it, kind of following them through, and he was able to pick up about three more yards than he probably should have on that play. And for David Sammons, wouldn't you like a long ball control offense here? Oh, score. Just what the doctor ordered, yeah. Midway through the fourth quarter. Again, Bell, a first down. down, still on his feet. Wow. Oh, oh ball taken away. Hepsiba's got the ball. Hepsiba has it. It was taken away by Jaden Law. Wow. And that's you see that a lot of times, backs fighting for extra yards, and somebody just rips the football away from them. No flags. It is Hepsiba football at the 43-yard line. Yeah, he's up, fighting. And Jaden Law rips the ball out while he's still up. What a play by Law. On the Busby's instant replay. And we were just saying, you want a long ball control drive? Not so much. Well, and it's exactly what Richmond almost did to Hepsiva. I mean, just, you know, ripped the ball away from the guys you're tackling him. But this one stands. The last one did not. So uh, there goes Telly. <laughs> Telly again and just pushing and grinding and pushing the pile. Real similar to the last play, though, so hold on to the football if you're Telly Johnson. Well, he did 17 yards on first down, and the Rebels will have it at the 26-yard line. You can see why he had those back-to-back -back four touchdown games. Rush for four touchdowns the very next week, four more. Both games well over 100 yards. Quickly, let's get to Matt uh, Lane for an Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. In terms of important drives here for ARC, this one's a huge one as they had some momentum, a lot of excitement on the sideline after getting uh, Hepsiba to punt the ball right there. So huge, huge drive right here for the Musketeers. Johnson again, flag down. 
We haven't had a lot of flags tonight. Been no, a very it's clean been, game. Been pretty clean, yeah. Tyshawn Bell came through the line, but he missed Johnson. He went up high and missed him. Wondering if he got his face mask. I believe that's going to be the call. It's a five-yard face mask on the defense. Yeah, so just a five-yarder, but they did get it. I think Bell immediately as he got a hold of the mask let go of it. Great catch, A.B. So first and five from the 19-yard line. And Telly Johnson, if he's able to finish off this drive by himself, John, he will be at 99 yards rushing because he is at 80 right now, Chris tells us. And not to mention all the tackles he's had tonight. As a Falcons fan, he reminds me of T.J. Duckett a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. The number 45 throws you two. I mean, I, gosh, I'm really going to date myself here. Remember Archie Griffin and Pete Johnson yep. back in the day? They were number 45 and 46. I mean, no, I don't remember them. <laughs> They're a little – actually, I don't remember them in college. Archie Griffin, of course, the back, you know, back-to-back Heisman Trophy winner. But in the pros, he was a little bit of an underachiever, and Pete Johnson was the better of the two. Last snap of the first half, more than likely. And it is Johnson – and just bullying his way inside the 10. And it'll be first and goal, Rebels. Great way to describe it, John. Just bullying his way through there. That's exactly what he's doing. You're not going to you're not gonna grab him and tackle him. you got to wrap him up, put a shot on him. Rebels might snap it one more time. They will. Why not? Johnson. Signal. Touchdown. Well, I said if he finished it off, and he did. 99 yards on the ground. For Telly Johnson in his second touchdown of the game. Good time to remind you that we will have the McDonald's offensive and defensive player of the game coming up in the post-game show. I think that guy might be involved in it he's unless in, something crazy is happening. He's in the mix. Let's just say that. <laughs> but Because keep in mind, not only does he play offense, he's the kicker, as you mentioned earlier. He kicks off plates, you know, he kicks the for extra points and field goals. Linebacker, running back. So the Rebels will go for two in the nine-point lead. And guess who? <laughs> Why not? And he's in. That was, well, we were talking about Richmond wanting a long, methodical drive. It didn't have to be that long because they got the recovery on the fumble, but that was one of those where you just say, okay, we're just going to give it to our best guy, and if you can stop him, great. And Richmond could not stop Telly Johnson on that drive. So an impressive drive for the Rebels, who now lead 26 to 17 with 7.6 seconds left here in quarter number three. And by the way, South Aiken, they're in the third quarter still. They've already put 56 on the board. 56 to 24, they lead Aiken mm. in that big rivalry game. And by the way, you got all the scores and highlights coming your way with uh, uh, Brendan Robertson tonight, so we won't update you on all of them, but 56 already with a quarter to go. Yeah, football Friday night coming your way at 11.35 yep. tonight over on WJBF News Channel 6, but some business to attend to as well here. Hepzibah trying to hang on. Richmond Academy will start from its uh, 37-yard line. When we began the fourth quarter of play, three quarters in the books, one quarter left. Hepzibah leading Richmond Academy by nine. Twelve minutes left to play on game night live. Richmond Academy down nine now. And starting from its own 44-yard line. And, and here it's goes Cochran. Cochran, yeah. And that's what you want on first down across midfield. And a first down for the Musketeers. Well, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Richmond had the ball down one, and they were moving. And then they turned it over, and now all of a sudden they find themselves down not two possessions. So this is a real big drive for the Musketeers. And, folks, uh, I want to tell you that Realty One Group Visionaries, your premier real estate brokerage in the CSRA located in Augusta and Aiken, they are home to an expert team of agents ready to help you buy or sell your home today. Call, email, or visit their website, rogvisionaries.com. 
Again, that's ROGVisionaries.com, Realty One Group Visionaries, opening doors and changing lives. Cochran again. This time, Hepsip is up to the task. Oh, ball out again. He's going to say he's down. And Cochran's helmet came off, so he'll have to come and out. And that was Jaden Law right in the middle of that again. He didn't end up with the ball. It was Allen that did. But <clears throat> We will once again be awarding our McDonald's Offensive and Defensive Player of the Game at the end of this game as Patrick, or Ryan Allen, I should say, is slow to get up. Yeah, we've had some – we do every year. We've had some great individual performances this year. We've had some great individual plays with our power play of the game, the East Central Health District, uh, uh, you know, hit of the game. And all those are coming up at the end of this one. Still to be decided as Bell gets the call. And the bell tolls for a first down at the 36-yard line. I've been saving that one all night. <laughs> well, they got enough bells to do it. TK, Malik, Tyshawn, they got a lot of bells on this team. But that was TK, the running back. And say another senior that's had a good night on senior night has been McDuffie with his returns. He's really helped Richmond with great field position. Number seven there, the receiver, you see him at the bottom of your screen. So the Musketeers not done here. Moving the ball fairly well. It is first down at the Hepzibah 36-yard, 37-yard line. You got a senior quarterback, senior running back, and he's going to swing it out on the near side for Josh Coors. Second time we've called his name tonight. Another well, he, good, nice game. Coors made a great catch to catch the ball. It was a low, a little bit of a low throw, and he didn't get his, he didn't put his knee down. And then he had a big gainer, but Ryan Allen made a great shoestring tackle. There's Allen, who's had a really good game tonight for the Rebels. Yeah, one of the cool things, uh, I talked to Jack Murphy, the ARC quarterback, back in June before his senior year, and we talked about ARC being on game night live. And at that point, we only knew they were going to be on for the Harlem game a couple of weeks back Yeah. as Cochran gets the call. And Cochran with a big game to the 25-yard line and another first down for ARC. Yeah, and now they're on for the second time in three weeks, and he told me how the team likes to well, – they win, obviously. But they, regardless of who's playing, because they're always playing on Friday night, they want to see the game on Sunday. Even if they're not in the game, they all get together and watch the game on Sunday, which I think is yeah, a, is a super it. cool thing. And, of course, if they win tonight – I can imagine there'll be a <laughs> nice viewing party. Oh, on senior night winning on, Sunday, on television, of course, yeah. From the 26, first and 10 ARC. Cochran pushes the pile ahead. So that's a gain of four, second and six. And now ARC will run Grady Nogle back in on offense, which is interesting to me. It's fun to watch. It, it is. And he he holds the ball and runs like he's, you know, Larry Zonker, you know, <laughs> some giant fullback. <laughs> he's not, but he runs that way and it works. Watch how he holds there he the football. There is 16 on the left side of your screen. I'd be shocked if he didn't get the carry. You he see does. It. He's just holding that ball with both hands. <laughs> he just, I love it. Old school. Yeah, coach has probably said, yeah, I will let you run the ball, but if you fumble it, you're coming out. <laughs> he's like, I'm holding it with both hands. I he's a senior. I mean, out. you know, he's only got so many games left anyway. Yeah. All right, let's get to your QBs by the quarter for quarter number three brought to you, as always, by Culpeper East Hardware. Yeah, let's start it off with Jack Murphy right there. Uh, he is three of seven for 22 yards uh, with a touchdown. He also has a rushing touchdown and 26 yards on the ground. Jalen Patrick is nine of ten for 143 yards. Uh, he also – uh, has a touchdown uh, pass and a touchdown run. By the way, he's ran four times for 34 yards uh, on the night also. Yeah, Hepzibah was ready for Nogle that time as Floyd in on the tackle. Yeah. So this is going to be a big third, big fourth down for uh, Richmond Academy. Yeah, a couple of the Hepzibah players getting up. You know, they, they've had to run after Cochran and, and Bell all night tonight. They get up a little... 
So Ken Gingerly. Nugent, one call Gingerly. that's all. Sorry, AB. Ken Nugent, yeah. one call that's all moment for uh, David Sammons, and he's going to try to kick the, actually, the uh, field goal here. Yeah, it's going, going to be a 37 yarder. And it's going to be a little short. Yeah, and I don't know what happened. It looked almost like Murray didn't get his timing down before the kick. Because he didn't get everything into that one. Let me see if I can see anything that happened there. No, it was okay. Did it get tipped? Uh, it might have got, yeah, it looked like the, the, let's see, the trajectory might have changed. Something looked funny. Let's watch this again. Yeah, it might have, somebody might have gotten a finger on that. Yeah, no, you no. Well, maybe the first, I don't know. That's Either way, either way it's, it's still 26-17, and it was short, and a good defensive stand by Absaba when they needed it because Richmond Academy was driving. Great work by the camera crew there, too, trying to absolutely get us that shot. So Jalen Patrick with the clock on his side, the scoreboard on his side, and a five-yard gain on first down. That was Marvin Preston on the carry. I'll tell you, he runs hard, too. I mean, Johnson's a bigger back, and... But uh, Preston, man, hits that hole hard. And he's just a sophomore. You don't think that makes Daniel Dorsey happy? Yeah, you know, like I said, he praised his young talent because we sort of focused on the big three, Telly Johnson, Eric Grant, who's been quiet tonight other than the block punt, and this quarterback, Patrick. And he was quick to point out they've got a lot of good young kids waiting their turn. Patrick flushed out of the pocket, throws short. You know, the pass incomplete, but I love him. A lot of young quarterbacks, the minute they tuck it, they're going to run. The minute they sense trouble. He was running to get open and give himself time to throw it downfield. Kept his head up, looking for a receiver just under through the pass. Well, I would think this is kind of a must uh, stop here if you're Richmond Academy on third and four. Yeah, this game is the way it's gone, and you need two scores. Yeah, I think it's a huge play for their defense. This is where you need – Tyshawn Bell or Malik Bell, one of their leaders, to step up and make a play. Oh, and they were coming with a blitz. Sure were. A little that's, too eager. And that's going to give Hepsiba a first down. It was third and four. That's going to give it to him. Boy, that is a big mistake there. And David Sammons with a young Richmond Academy team, with the exception of the, the senior quarterback and running back and Grady Nogle on defense. So many of these games, John, can change on one or two plays. So when something like that happens, and there's a nice pass play to Singleton, you know, these, these games hinge on those plays. And, and that's you, and I'm sure that's what Samus is going to stress to these guys, especially the younger players that are coming back. You know, those little plays change the outcome of the game. If we stop there and make a punt, we could go down and score and really make this a game. And now – Pepsi was on the move again. Well, and you and I were talking during the break that, that the momentum shift with the Jaden Law when he took the ball away yeah. and the fumble that Pepsi got to start the second half. And now trying to grind away that clock. Yeah, Telly they, Johnson again. Yeah, they tried to blitz with Grady Nogle that time. The tackle made by Will Perry, number 13. The fridge. I don't know that you could have two people name the same further apart <laughs> than that young man in the fridge. <laughs> Speaking, we were talking earlier about Aiken and South Aiken. William played at, uh, uh, at Aiken and, and his, his brother, brother played at South. Yeah. Michael Dean played at South they Aiken. Both went to NFL success. Yep. Johnson just full steam ahead. Oh, there he, he goes. goes. So he's got 54 speed. yards for the touchdown for Telly Johnson. That puts him at 153 yards on the night with three touchdowns and a two-point conversion. And, oh, by the way, he's played pretty good on defense, too. And could be the exclamation point for Hepzibah. But you look at the speed. Wrap up the number three spot in this region. I mean, he's a big back, but he was running, running away from folks there. So another great night for Telly Johnson. And now you'll... Try to get his look, trying to catch his breath so he can <laughs> kick the extra point. Love it. G give me a second, Coach. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> a little bit of do it all. I think he can be excused for that. Yeah. <laughs> for that. Why were you tired? Because I just <laughs> ran a 54 yard <laughs> touchdown, what Coach. Do we, what do you want me to do? Oh. <laughs> uh, 32-17, Hepzibah on the next to last week of Game Night Live. 
Well, my, how this game has changed. Again, 18 to 17 earlier, Richmond down one with the ball. And now all of a sudden they're down 15. And it's Hepsa was sort of taken over here with about five minutes to go. So ARC needs points and needs them quick. Well, here, if you're ARC though, here's the one good thing. You needed two scores anyway. You know, now instead of a touchdown and a field goal, you need two touchdowns. But it was a two possession game, so that hasn't changed. The big thing here is it, you can't take all day. You, you, got, you need a couple of big plays because you only have five minutes left, and they've had a hard time stopping Hepsiba, you know, running the football. That was Bryce Ivey on the return, one of these Musketeers who is getting interest from some small colleges. And we talk about Telly Johnson. Richmond's ran the ball good combined. T.K. Bell and Cochran, 25 carries for 139 yards. So they've been able to run the football. As Murphy just absolutely eaten alive by Marcus Kahn. Yeah, he's another underclassman. Helps. He's got a lot of guys coming back next year. Daniel Dorsey trying to. We're going for Cone. And I Marcus love Cone. and I love what happened there. One of their top players on their defensive line is number nine, Terrence Heron. He's been great tonight. And his teammate makes the play, and Heron's behind him, pointing his fingers at him like, yep, he did it. Not me. It's him giving him, giving him a little love there. I love that. Good teammates. Second and 16 after this play, we'll get you the Stump AB trivia question. I know you were hoping uh, to avoid that tonight. I was hoping tonight. that was going to. Oh. And another. It's a pick. That's Ryan Allen. His second interception of the year, if they say he came down in bounds. And I believe that was Lewis. Oh, it was Deshaun Lewis. Also his second interception of the year, if he came down in bounds. And I think they're saying he did not. Yeah, they're though. saying he's out of bounds. He tried to get the feet in. I know one thing, one of the Richmond County players, I think that was McDuffie. He could go into politics himself because he was politicking <laughs> for a call right there. He was pointing at the sideline. Uh, what, less feet. than two weeks to election day? <laughs> sure, why not? He's like, no, he was out of bounds, sir. So new life for Richmond Academy, but facing third and 16. Yeah, they're going to have to – two plays to get it maybe, but you got to get it. Murphy. Murphy using his feet. He's a better athlete than we give him credit. You know, we mentioned the baseball. He's, you know, back-to-back -back team MVP in baseball and all-region pitcher. And we've seen him run over the years. Just not what they're asking him to do tonight, but he tucked it and made a nice pick up there. So it's a fourth down that will probably decide this thing one way or the other, whether or not Richmond Academy has a chance to come back. Fourth and four from the 46-yard line. And Murphy will try to throw. He'll be flushed from the pocket. He'll try to run for it. Oh, nice fake. And he's got it. Great job by Jack Murphy and a first down for Richmond Academy to keep this thing alive. I love it. You know, senior night, he's not giving up. No, no give up at all in this team yet. The clock is not their friend though right now. 3.43, now less than that. Murphy in hurry up mode and now a flag will fly or is there a timeout? Timeout Hepsiba, which will allow us to get the Stump AB trivia question in. And that trivia question is, you know, Richmond Academy has been here since 1783, as we've told you. They're the Musketeers now. What was the original oh, mascot yeah. of the Academy of Richmond County? You won't have as much time to think about this because yeah. we're, you know, we waited till the fourth quarter to ask it. But you got some time. Think about it. Think about it at home. Some of you may know. Sadly, I, I'm going to have to make a guess. You know what's funny is uh, uh, How do I not one, know that? That's one of our uh, our newest reporter at WJBF, Tiffany Hobbs, uh, has an acting background, and she is starring in a uh, Hallmark Christmas movie called A Holiday Spectacular, airing on November 27th on Hallmark Channel. And she, um, the star of that movie with her is Eve Plum. You know who Eve Plum is? Who is it? That's the Jan Brady. Oh, there the you go. Bunch. The name was familiar. Yeah. I did not know until this week that Jan Brady's father, Neely Plum, yeah. an Augusta native, graduate of Richmond, Richmond Academy, Academy. Wow. and is a, a 2016 inductee into the Richmond Academy Hall of Fame and became a great music composer. They, were, renowned. The, they were the ARC Plums. <laughs> <laughs> they were. There's a first down, or almost close to a first down. It'll be a little bit short. Well, on that trivia, John, my first instinct is just to say Bulldogs, but I don't think it was that. I think it was something political. Uh, you know what, I'll give, I'll give you a hint. You, you got the first letter right. 
Really? Yep. I, and I was thinking something political, like statesman, something. But no, a B, that's not going to be right. And it's not the Braves. Mm-hmm. Oh, the false start on the offense. One. We'll replay well, second down. That's the Musketeers down. wanted. And we now have 3.20 left to play in this one. Don't forget our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game coming up after this one, as well as our Powerade play of the game and our East Central Health District hit of the game, all coming up in the post-game show. But Richmond Academy trying to prolong that second and seven. Is he in? He is. Oh, yeah. Great McDuffie. play in a first down. McDuffie with a great grab, a 37-yard line. Man, I thought it was going to be low. Murphy trying to get it to his favorite target, and well, Duffy and able to get his hands under it. Nice catch. Good call by the officials. And Murphy threw it where only he could get it. So a fresh set of downs for the Musketeers. And is that picked? Nearly intercepted by Ryan Allen. I think it's incomplete. They're going to say incomplete. I think some confusion there. I think Murphy thought the receiver was going to run a different route there, and he threw it, and Murphy, or excuse me, Allen almost able to corral it. Getting his receiver straight as Trav Wright. Second and 10 from the 47-yard line. Murphy to the near side. And that's Trav Wright on the catch. We talked about him earlier, he and his brother Ben. And is Murphy okay? Uh-oh. Yeah, he doesn't. Down to the, line. the trainers will come out and look at him. He's waving him off, but they are going to take a look at him. So will Coach David Sammons. Well, you know he doesn't want to come out on senior night trying to bring his team back, but sometimes the body can't do what the heart wants you to do. Well, this is a shame if he has to come out with 254 left to play. Hopefully he just got the breath knocked out of him. And if that is the last play for Jack Murphy on this field, what a four-year career he has had. Well, now let's see who they bring in at QB spot. Yeah, no now, pressure. Third and four <laughs> with the game on the line. They will turn to Jim K. Is that is that K or is that Brooks? Actually, you're right. You're absolutely right. Brooks Dickinson. It's Brooks Dickinson, a sophomore. Yeah. We saw him come in briefly in the Harlem game. And he completes it on his first attempt. And it's a first down for the Musketeers. So Dickinson with a non-traditional number 30 at quarterback. He's also thrown from a non-traditional side, the left. The and he'll QB. roll to the left. And that one's incomplete. Trying to throw back across the field a little bit, trying to find They're going to give him the catch. Oh, OK, Ben That's two Wright. straight completions. So both Wright brothers have made catches on this play. Well, the Wright brothers have had some success through the <laughs> air over the years. Second and two, low snap. Dickinson, first down. How about this? And again, that's Ben Wright, the freshman. Back-to-back -back catches for him. So first and goal at the nine-yard line. Dickinson will roll to his... Weak side and a little miscommunication there. Yeah. Which will happen when you bring a new quarterback in. You've got him down here, though, with still, there's still two minutes left. If he can get him in the end zone, there's Dickinson, who just came in after Murphy had to be helped off. Watching Murphy on the sideline, still being tended to by the trainers. He has his helmet off. So it looks like this is Dickinson's game with 2.12 left to play. Hepzibah trying to hang on here. Yeah, it would take a, a miracle for Richmond Academy at this point. 
But if you're David Sammons, you're looking to the future here. And it's right, stopped at the six yard line, but there is a flag down. Yeah, he fumbled the football, but it was recovered by Cochran. That's three catches on this drive for Ben Wright, four catches on this drive for the Wright brothers, and they did not have a catch prior to this drive. So coming up big on this drive for him for sure. That one's going to come back, though. Yeah. Let's get you uh, quickly down to Matt Lane for our final Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. We had tonight. a block in the back on the offense. We'll replay second down. Uh, yeah, John. Jack Murphy just getting some information. Actually going to be out the remainder of the game with an ankle injury, so he will not return tonight. Well, that's a shame. Uh, yeah, having to leave his him. final game here at ARC Stadium, but let's hope he's okay and ready to go against Salem next week because that's going to be an important game as well. As Dickinson takes over and takes it himself, another flag. We mentioned it was a clean game until the last couple of plays. And this one might be on the defense, though, which hurts from Academy. Lost yards on the block in the back a moment ago. They're going to get all those back. So inside the final two minutes now. It's a personal foul, face mask on the defense. We'll replay second down. The call against Hepsiba. Move the ball to the seven yard line. So Dickinson on second and goal, and he is absolutely eaten alive. And guess maybe I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> Telly Johnson, there he is again. All over the place tonight. And Dickinson, the backup quarterback, start, was whipping it around the field. Now things have slowed with the penalty and then the sack. Still impressive, though, coming off the bench. Yeah. Like I said, the, there's just kids these days are different, man. Well, the, the, the clock is continuing to run, and it's pretty apparent that ARC is just, you know, trying to get some reps here. And Dickinson looks good going to the 10 yard line. It'll bring up fourth down. And I would imagine this is. Well, it's going to be a timeout ARC. Yeah, I think you got to go for it here. I mean, you're down two scores. A field goal doesn't help you. You're still down two scores. So I think you got to go for it and try to get the ball in the end zone. Give us a chance to answer our. Uh, Stump AB trivia question. Again, the trivia question, uh, of course, ARC, been here since 1783. They are now known as the Musketeers. What was the original mascot of I'm, ARC? I'm a, I said something political. I'm going to go Barons for, like, land barons. Hmm. And the answer is? Bearcats. Bearcats. You had the right first letter. Yeah, you said Bulldogs cool. to start with. I did not know. How do I not know that? I didn't know it either. That's what Wikipedia does for you. Yeah. I should have gone in there and changed that to Barons. <laughs> Do it after the game. You'll have time. I was like, John, you're, I was right the whole time. <laughs> if I remember, we had that trivia question at the 378 War with Lincoln County and Washington Wilkes. They were originally both called the Bearcats before they became the Red Devils and the Tigers. I could be wrong on that. I think I remember that. Brooks Dickinson since coming in, three of four for 22 yards. He's run and for 11. the end zone here and incomplete. You know, he gave his receiver a chance to make a play, but it's incomplete. And that's going to give the ball back over to the Rebels with the 63 seconds left on the and clock. So victory formation time for Hepsiba. And they will wrap up, in all for all intents and purposes, the number three seed in Region 4 AAA. And an impressive win by Daniel Dorsey and his Hepzibah team. Yeah, and I tell you, I first chance seeing Telly Johnson, and he is exactly what I, you know, the stats don't lie. I mean, he's a player. He looked great tonight. And, you know, Jalen Patrick and a few of the other guys did, did well, but Telly Johnson is something special running the football and on defense. And they've got some other guys, Ryan Allen and some other guys on that defense that are outstanding too. Jaden Law, who had the big uh, fumble recovery. As the Rebels salt this thing away, we want to thank our director, Kyle Thomas, our replay coordinator, Hannah DiArco, on graphics, Josh Recor, as always, 
audio, Jeff Singleton, our camera folks tonight, Darius Davis, Ikea Hawes, James Carroll, Gary Nipple. Our field grip, Katron Huge, sideline, Kaylee Foster, red cap, keeping everybody in order on the field, Scott Scadden, keeping us on the air in the live truck tonight, Reggie Mackey, and back at Master Control, Levi Crawford. A huge thanks to our entire crew tonight, which, hey, look, there's a lot of times they have to set up in the heat or the rain. Yeah. Today was not that day. It was pretty nice, so I'm going to give I'm still giving credit. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> tough. I'm not saying a word. I, I wouldn't, I, you know, I, listen, I wouldn't mind it being outside today. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> and they're all going, well, why weren't you here? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was busy. I, I was we, busy. I'd we stop. had a spot for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate our crew. We, yeah. we we love what they do, and uh, and we got one more game to go. And again, we don't know where we'll be a week from tonight. It's a flex game, and it'll depend on the outcome of tonight's game. So excited about what the future holds for Game Night Live next Friday. And of course, a few months away. But Scott Scadden was talking about it at halftime. We'll still got the Border Bowl to come up in January too. Looking, always look forward to that. Such yeah. a special game. So inside the final minute, Rebels trying to eat the clock. And one more snap should do it. Yeah, that was Telly Johnson again. and He's just adding to those stats now, 160 or so yards. 162 to be, or no, actually 157. 162 is the passing yards for Jalen Patrick. And we'll get you all that with QBs by the quarter in just a moment. But 15 carries, 157 yards, and three touchdowns for Telly Johnson, not to mention probably double-digit tackles on defense as well. Well, the name Hepzibah comes from the Bible. It's from the book of Isaiah. It is a poet poetic name for the city of Jerusalem. It means, my delight is in her. And there is much delight in Hepzibah tonight as the Rebels, for all intents and purposes, have wrapped up the number three spot in the playoffs in Region 4 AAA with a win over Richmond Academy, 32 to 17. Yeah, terrific game tonight for Telly, Pat uh, uh, Telly Johnson, Jalen Patrick, all look tremendous tonight. And, hey, Richmond Academy gave them everything they could handle. It was 18-17, a one-point game. Richmond had the ball. That turnover of the strip by Jaden Law was a big turning point in this one. So Hepzibah improves to 5-4, and 2-2 two and two in the region. Richmond Academy falls to 4-5, and 1-3 and three in the region. And Hepzibah will go on the road, or actually be at home next week to play Cross Creek. Hepzibah, uh, their Cross Creek is on the right direction under a new coach, Ezard Horn, but you would think Hepzibah would be able to maintain its spot in the region. And with that, we go down to Matt Lane with the victorious head coach oh, of the Hepzibah Rebels. We're delivering some information really quick. I'm going to hop on the other side. <laughs> the coach Did it. had to talk to somebody real quick. And now we go down to the victorious head coach of the Hepzibah Rebels, Daniel Dorsey. Uh, coach, look good on offense. Uh, a couple of miscues early on. Can you kind of speak to that and uh, what you told your team? Well, I guess it was just nerves, you know, uh, having a bye week. Uh, haven't had real competition in, in over two weeks, man. You kind of come out, you got to get the nerves out. Um, and I think our guys did a good job adjusting after uh, the first half and coming out after halftime and, and kind of putting a, a stamp on it. You, you think it wasn't that they were getting excited for Halloween? Yeah, they, they probably had a sugar rush because they were all eating candy earlier. So, <laughs> But you finished out the game. Kind of what did you tell your team there late to sort of, like you said, going through the bye week, getting that – getting kind of that out of their system a little bit and really finishing strong there, especially on offense. Well, that was the biggest thing was we just got to finish. You know, uh, we started this game. Um, we had some some good moments. We had some moments kind of like you said where we stalled. I just said just, just lock in. You got 24 minutes uh, for the second half and just finish. Finish what we started. Can you kind of mention Telly's game? Terrific game on offense, but also quite a few plays on defense. Oh, yeah. Um, once again, I mean, he's, he's an outstanding athlete. Um, I think he's at the point right now where his body's conditioned to kind of help us on both sides. The weather's gotten a little bit cooler, so the cramps aren't going to hit us as much. But uh, 
I mean, like I said, he's a phenomenal athlete. And I mean, he can kick, he can run, he can tackle. You know, he kind of does it all. Congrats on the win, and uh, thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Back to you, John. All right, congratulations to Coach Dorsey. Don't go anywhere. We still have plenty of hardware to hand out. The McDonald's Offensive and Defensive Players of the Game, the Powerade Play of the Game, and the East Central Health District Hit of the Game. And welcome on the field here at ARC for our McDonald's Offensive and Defensive Players of the Game. We're going to hand out some hardware really quick. We're actually going to start on the defensive side of the ball. Our McDonald's Defensive Player of the Game, number 13, Jaden Law, had the strip fumble earlier in the game that kind of really set the pace uh, for uh, the Rebels tonight. And Jaden, can you kind of speak to that? Your coach mentioned you guys had a bye week and maybe you're a little bit rusty. How long did it really feel for you to kind of get back in your game? Well, it felt good. It started up front, started with the practice and all. And with the coach, the coach give it a game plan, we execute the game plan. Very much so. Did you did you feel a little more comfortable in the second half, going through halftime and kind of getting yourself reestablished footing-wise? Yes, sir. I had to get my footing right. I was feeling good on the field right there. Well, very good. Number 13, Jaden Law, our defensive player of the game. And number 45, somebody who also had a great game on defense, but especially on offense, three touchdowns there for number 45, Telly Johnson. A terrific game. Um, can you just kind of mention some big plays? It seemed like you guys saw it a couple of times, but it, but you kind of kept believing in it, and you had some big plays. Yes, sir. I told Coach coming out of halftime, I was ready. I told them boys I put them on my back, and they started up front in my old line. I love them boys to death. They blocked on the perimeter, and I was able to break out for a long run. Change the game. Change the momentum of the game. I told Coach, keep feet and we rushed down the field and was able to put it in. Well, it was a terrific effort, a lot of huge plays, but your coach did also mention maybe y'all had too much candy this week. Is there any truth to that? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> okay, hey, we came out off of the week. We had a little break. Coach let us have a little fun, but we came back in and had to lock in and win the game. Well, y'all did that looking really good. Second half on offense. Number 45, Telly Johnson, our McDonald's Offensive Players of the Game. Back to you, John. Uh, thanks, Matt, and, and congratulations to Telly and Jaden. And, and by the way, if that's what happens when you feed them candy, yeah, go get some candy. Go get, go get some candy. And by the way, tomorrow, Daniel Dorsey, he he's good on offense, defense. He kicks and he tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they did eat candy. That's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. All right, let's say as the players of McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the week uh, leave the field. Let's get you your QBs by the quarter for the final quarter brought to you by uh, Culpa Breeze Hardware. Yeah, for Richmond Academy, Jack Murphy, who had to leave the game late with an injury, three of eight passing for 33 yards. He did have a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. He ended up with 45 yards rushing. And on the other side of the ball, Jalen Patrick, 10 of 12 through the air for 162 yards. Uh, he also had a touchdown pass and a touchdown run, and he ended up with 34 yards on the ground. And that brings us to our Powerade play of the game. A lot to choose from, really. I mean, but uh, it's the Jalen Patrick. Little hesitation, little fake. Shake and bake. Yeah, bounce to the outside for his touchdown run. Yeah, just a solid game from that young man. And now the uh, East Central Health District hit of the game. I think maybe Ryan, the Ryan Allen I think play. we, yeah. Well, let's we'll see. It might be a different. Oh, it was the. Oh, yeah. You got to give it to Dunnigan. I forgot about that. So Richmond Academy yeah. doesn't get the win, but gets the East Central Health District hit of the game. So congratulations to Dunnigan and the Musketeers. So big win for Hepzibah. They beat Richmond Academy and all but secure the third spot in from the from Region 4 AAA in the playoffs. AB, final thoughts on this one? Yeah, I thought, you know, Richmond came out and gave them a good fight, but Hepzibah, you know, flexed their muscle a little bit. Telly Johnson, as advertised, great on both sides of the ball. And I just love the composure. Usually the big-time athletes, you don't think composure, but Jalen Patrick at quarterback is a mixture of just a great athlete. But I love his composure at the position. That's going to bode, you know, serve them well in the playoffs. You Hepsiba fans are going to want to catch the encore presentation of WJBF Game Night Live coming up on Sunday at noon to get your 
NFL Sunday started. And don't forget, a lot of huge matchups, especially on the South Carolina side tonight as they finalize playoff position, uh, but on the Georgia side as well, even in the private schools. So you want to tune in for football Friday night coming up at 1135, 30 minutes of high school football, all the highlights and scores with Brendan Robertson over on WJBF News Channel 6. Next week. We don't know where we're going to be. It all depends <laughs> we'll on what happens though. tonight. <laughs> so watch game or watch football Friday night and find out what happens, and we'll announce that on social media and on WJBF News Channel 6. For our fill-in statistician tonight, Chris Cassidy filling the incomparable shoes of Nathan Edwards. Nathan Edwards down on the – or uh, Matt Lane down on the field. For A.B., John Hart, good night from ARC. Hepsiba, a winner. We'll see you next week from – who knows?